Uh, good morning, River Church. It is good to be with you guys today. Uh, my name is Pastor Billy. I am one of the pastors here. Pastor Randy is uh, up in Alaska, but I'm here. Um, if you're a first-time guest, we'd like to welcome you. You should have received a connection card on your way in. Uh, go ahead and fill this out. Uh, at the end of the service, take it over to the welcome desk. It's that little desk table right over there. And, and we just love to say hi to you and get to know you and, and all of those things. I just thank you for coming. Uh, everyone else, this is your way to uh, connect with us. If you have any prayer requests, anything of that nature, you, you already know the drill. Uh, fill it out, put it in the offering basket. Myself and Pastor Randy will pray for you, be praying for you guys uh, throughout the week. So uh, these are very important. Again, first time guests, take them, fill them out over there. Everyone else in the offering uh, basket. <clears throat> we got some announcements regarding Easter this, uh, this morning. You know, um, our Easter weekend uh, is coming up, and we're excited about it. I've, I've spent a lot of time uh, thinking about it. I know a lot of people who are working behind the scenes, trying to get it prepared. Uh, uh, trying to get it prepared for you guys uh, have been spending a lot of time uh, getting it ready uh, as well. So the first thing I'd like to announce to you guys is our Good Friday service. It's going to be from 6.30 to 8.00. Um, it may finish a little bit earlier, but that's just a, a big window there. Uh, 6.30 to 8, it's going to be a great service. Um, we're going to go have some readers, and we're going to read through the Stations of the Cross. Um, it's a very reflective time, a very um, a time that, that a lot of emphasis is, putting, is, is being put on uh, what Christ did um, on the cross, you know, that, that, whole, that whole process. So it's super exciting. I've been talking to Lise about the music, and we're just getting it all ramped up. I'm really, really pumped about our Good Friday service. Uh, on Saturday, we're going to have a Easter egg, uh, a, a park day celebration at, uh, at um, Dean Porter Park. Josie's going to come up here and tell you guys a little bit about that. Not yet. Um, but that's from 11 to 2. That's on Saturday. Uh, some of us thought it was this past Saturday, uh, but it's next Saturday. All right, next Saturday from 11 to 2. And then um, on Sunday morning, we're going to have our Easter uh, celebration on Sunday morning. And we're just going to you know, talk about the resurrection, all that stuff. So it's going to be a great weekend. We've got a lot planned in, in, in regards to that. And we're just looking forward to that. With that said, I'm going to invite Josie up uh, so she can uh, tell us, give us some more details about Saturday. Hello, hello. Okay, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, River Church. Um, so, what are we going to talk about? Easter, uh, can you go to the slides before? Okay, so we're going to have a family park day at Dean Porter Park from 11 to 2. You are not obligated to stay all of those hours, <laughs> but that's our general time range. Um, we do have, I have to thank some volunteers for bringing a lot of um, candies for the eggs and everything. Thank you so much for that. Um, we are going to have Easter egg hunt. Um, we are also going to be providing bar uh, burgers and hot dogs, chips and side dishes. If you want to bring any more side dishes um, that would be greatly appreciated or if we I think we're needing some napkins and cups you know little things like that let me know I'll be here <laughs> after uh, church um, another thing is I believe we're gonna have face painting so that's gonna be on the agenda if your kids want to get their face painted it's gonna happen there and uh, another thing is on Thursday at 6, we're going to meet here to stuff eggs. If anyone wants to volunteer and help us out, we're going to be here Thursday, 6 o'clock. So remember that. And I think we're all set. But talk to me after church, and I will be around floating. Um, I'm pretty short, but I know you can find me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Josie. It's a... Uh... Those events are a lot of work, so I just thank you, Josie, and your team of people uh, getting all that stuff organized for us. Uh, it's going to be exciting, guys. I've already invited um, two of my friends who don't come to church um, to, to come join us that Sunday. They got, they got little kids. They got families. And one of my friends texted me. He's like, hey, man, what if we got our families together? We did like an Easter egg hunt. And I was like, well, I got something for you. 
we're doing an Easter egg hunt in our church. You should come and join us to that. And so, again, two of my friends and their families have, have said they're going to come. So I just want to encourage you guys to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, invite your families, and come join us on that Saturday morning. Uh, with that, if you guys could just stand and say hello to someone next to you. <clears throat> Uh, good morning again, River Church. Um, it's always great to be here. I'm excited that we get to come together and just uh, study God's Word. And, and I just pray that as we go through today, that His Word, as we study it, just shapes us into the image of Jesus. And so uh, with that, <clears throat> today is Palm Sunday. Um, it is marks the, the day of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and, and it marks the beginning of his final week of life, right? His final week of his earthly uh, life, his earthly uh, ministry. And there's a lot to di dissect there. We're going to look at all that, but today uh, we're going to go, instead of, instead of doing a Palm Sunday uh, sermon, we're going to continue on in our, uh, in our study of Matthew. Um, eventually, you know, uh, Palm Sunday, that, that passage, it's found in Matthew 21. Eventually, like in a year, maybe next, next Palm Sunday, we'll be at Matthew 21. Uh, we'll get to study it. But for today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 6. And we're going to be answering this question. How should I deal with my disappointment? How should I deal with with disappointments. Perhaps you're disappointed that we're not talking about Palm Sunday this morning. Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> so I've been, I feel like every time I preach, I've used uh, an element of what I'm about to illustrate is, is a common theme. But uh, if you guys don't know, I am a middle school teacher at Falk Middle School, um, and I have spoken about my, uh, my dreadful class that I have. Um, <clears throat> Um, you know, it's the one that I've been talking about. It's right after lunch, and, and I love those kids. Those are good kids. I really do care about them, uh, but they're, it, that class has been a struggle for me, and there are a few of the kids in particular that, that tend to um, really, really test my patience. Um, and so a few months ago, you know, as I've been going through this, this class, and I've been talking about it um, as I've been preaching, and... and, and uh, 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 recently, I found out that uh, I was going to get some relief. You know, I was just, Lord, please, like, I just want some sort of relief. May something change. Can, can, you, can you maybe move some of the kids to a different class? Maybe can you do something? And so a few months ago, I got word that I was finally going to get some relief. Uh, and that was exciting. So <clears throat> what's happening in our school districts right now is everybody's getting ready for, like, the end of the year exams, right, those state tests. If you're a core teacher, I will be praying for you because it's exhausting. Um, but they're, they're trying to get ready, get the kids ready for these 
uh, the, the star test. It's, it's like crunch time right now. And so what our school uh, decided to do, and every principal has their discretion on how they want to, to handle this, but, but what our school has decided to do is uh, they did something that's called clinics. They're doing these clinics. And basically what that means is they're taking students out of their elective classes, which is my class, uh, and putting them, uh, giving them extra time in their core classes. And so, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I was excited about this. I was like, man, finally, you know, I, I don't have to be the primary person. I can just go, go aid and help out these core teachers, uh, but I can finally get some relief. So I was like, I like marked my calendar. I was like looking forward to this day. Uh, but uh, if you're familiar with the phrase, don't count your chickens before they hatch, well, I was guilty of that phrase, right? So, so as the day was approaching where these clinicals were going to start and they're going to move students out of my class, as that day was approaching, I received word that, yes, that was going to happen, but it was going to happen every elective period except the period that I had these kids. And so... I was like so mad. <laughs> I was frustrated. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, you know, all the other, uh, other coaches, they, they got to experience, you know, their kids going out. And so the whole day I'm just watching all these kids go to their other teachers. And then when it's my turn, like all the kids were still there. Um, and it was tough, you know. And, and on top of that, uh, to, to help the core teachers plan a little better and have a little bit more time to prepare, what they did is they ended up sending some additional students to my class, right? So instead of having fewer kids, I now have more kids. Um, and man, I was, you know, I was, I, was, I was really having a hard time, and I was talking to Lisa about it and, and talking to my gospel community. If you guys are here, you've heard this before, but I was just, I was having a hard time. Um, I was bitter, I was upset, uh, I was just angry, and, 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 and ultimately I was just very, very, very just disappointed. I was let down. You know, things did not go the way that I had planned and hoped that they would. You see, we all experience disappointment, right? And these, these, this, this disappointment happens when uh, this is pretty standard stuff, but, but disappointment happens when there is an unmet expectation, right? You, you have an expectation of something going a certain way, and it does not end up going that way. And I believe it's definitely, definitely a spiritual matter, right? When, when, we, when we get upset, when we get disappointed uh, in these ways, it is definitely a spiritual matter. It's as if we have the script of how things are supposed to go in our lives. It's as, it's as if we have the script of how things are supposed to be and we expect God to act accordingly, right? To fall into place, right? We become the boss and we expect God to work for us. And when this doesn't happen, we become disappointed, Right? And if, if that disappointment continues to grow, we can, we can become, grow bitter and angry at God. And, and in some cases, it'll, it'll want us to turn away from God, to run from Him. We want to try to figure it out ourselves. We want to take control of that situation. <clears throat> So because these disappointments uh, in our life can cause us to doubt God's goodness and character, right, we must cling to what we know to, uh, to be true. Right? We must pursue Jesus in our disappointments, in our difficulties. And this is where we're going today. And as we are going through these things, we should, we should have this posture, this hope, I hope, this is true of us, is that we cling to Jesus instead of run away from Him. So how have you been disappointed recently? I know we would probably never say this out loud, but, but how many of us feel like maybe the Lord has just 
let us down a little bit. Or, or that things that uh, aren't going the way that we thought they would. How have we been disappointed recently? Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, I pray over our hearts this morning. May you reveal to us ways that we have been disappointed and, and feel disappointed. And instead of these disappointments uh, causing us to run from you, Lord, I pray that these disappointments, that in them we draw closer to you. I pray that we cling tightly to you in our disappointments. I pray that we don't doubt your goodness in our disappointing times. Lord, thank you for letting us gather today, letting us come together. Lord, I pray that uh, just as we do this, Lord, I pray that you just speak to us. You speak uh, through your word preached, Lord. I pray that you convict us in ways we need to be convicted. I pray that you encourage us in ways that we need to be encouraged, Lord. And I just pray that uh, you grow us into your image this morning. And lastly, Lord, I just pray over uh, just the preaching of your word this morning. Lord, we find hope not in what I say, not in my words, Lord, but in your word, uh, in the Bible preached, Lord. So I just pray that we, our hope is found in your word, Lord. Holy Spirit, speak through us uh, and speak to us, Lord. Pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> So today, again, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 6, right? And just before this section, if we remember, uh, in chapter 10, chapter 9, chapter 10, Jesus is talking to his disciples, uh, and then Jesus uh, encourages his disciples at the beginning of chapter 10 to um, go and, uh, and have compassion, right? Freely give compassion to others, right? And so he sends them out and he warns them as they're going out we've been studying this the past couple of weeks but as they're going out he warns them to expect opposition right to expect rejection to expect suffering right the way that the, the what they had hoped and and, and maybe things uh, becoming easier right he's saying to not expect that to be the case and so in today's passage we're going to be looking at a passage about John the Baptist. And it's funny, right? John the Baptist, as we see this story, John the Baptist, it seems as though he missed that message, right? He missed the memo of suffering. What Jesus was introducing as the kingdom of heaven was not what John the Baptist had in mind. Right, John, when we've talked about this, John was expecting this military triumph and, and deliverance and, and dominance. All right, if, we, if we were going to look at it right now, but uh, if you look back in, uh, at his words in Matthew chapter 3, when John the Baptist is talking, you can see this, and, and we're going to read it right now. And, and as we read, I want us to pay attention to the manner in which John the Baptist is talking. Right? He is brave. <clears throat> he is bold. He sounds like a tough guy, right? Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. It says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice calling out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Verse 4, <clears throat> John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. Right? People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw, listen to this, when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, coming to him where he was baptizing, he said to them, you broad of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce faith, a fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think that you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. 
I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children of Abraham. Verse 10, the axe is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Right? Tough guy. All right, we're about to, it's about to go down. Right? Verse 11, I baptize you with water and uh, for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Man, like if I'm walking up to that guy, like I'm just going to turn around and walk away, right? This dude's about to get mad at me. Uh, but John's like, you know, I can say what I want. I can dress how I want to dress. I can eat what I want to eat, right? The kingdom of God has come near. If you're not getting in line, your life, uh, if your life is not bearing fruit, then you are about to get burned, right? Cut down. It's not going to be good for you. Again, the Jews of Jesus' day expected the Messiah to redeem Israel by overthrowing the rule uh, of the Romans and the establishment of an earthly, and I'm sorry, and establishing an earthly kingdom. So, so, so that's what we see that John the Baptist was expecting now let's see what he got we're going to be in matthew chapter 11 verses 1 through 6 verse 1 says after jesus finished instructing his 12 disciples he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of galilee and again we just talked about this but he spent all of chapter 10 uh expressing how they are going to suffer. And it's interesting if we read, as we read this passage, it seems like this John the Baptist uh, story is an illustration of what Jesus was just talking about. Right? Your life is going to be suffering. Look, right? We got verse, uh, verse 2. <clears throat> when John, who was in prison, right? Not how he anticipated it. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? Verse 4, Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you see and hear. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. To the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So for John, right, things are not going to plan. There's no military dominance. In fact, as we just read, John is in jail. Right, King Herod, who's a king uh, uh, at the time, he, he uh, John the Baptist uh, had spoke out to King Herod in his marriage, and 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 uh, and anyway, as a result of that, as as a result of him speaking out, eventually he gets thrown in jail. All right, he is he in this passage. He is far from the bold, the mighty man that we saw in chapter three. All right, he is he is much more. Uh, somber, much more uncertain of things. Right? Things are not going the way that he had planned for them to go. Right? It seems as though he's confused. It wasn't what he was expecting. Right? In his disappointment, this is the, 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 the interesting point, in his disappointment, we see him lean into Jesus instead of away from him. Again, in his disappointment, in John the Baptist's disappointment, we see him lean away from Jesus instead of leaning... In, I'm sorry, we see him lean into Jesus instead of leaning away from him. So a question I want to ask us this morning is, 
In what ways are we struggling this morning? In what ways are we facing disappointment? In what ways are we doubting God's goodness? In what ways do we feel like the Lord has uh, perhaps let us down? Again, because disappointments in life cause us to doubt God's goodness, cause us to potentially pull away from God, we must cling to Christ instead of pulling away. We must pursue Jesus. Now, from this passage, there are three things that I would like for us to see uh, as we go through and, and deal with our disappointments. And the first one is, since we are to pursue Jesus in our disappointment, we must seek Him in prayer. We must seek Him in prayer. We must talk to Him. Right? Verse 2 says, When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask Him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Right? In John's disappointment, we see Him trying to communicate with Jesus. He's trying to talk to to Jesus. He knows that Jesus uh, can only provide the answer to his question, right? And, and Jesus, only, I'm sorry, only Jesus can provide the answer to his question. Right now, technically, I guess John isn't praying, but he is seeking conversation with Jesus, and that's what prayer is. Right? Jesus wants us to come to him in prayer. He doesn't want us to just hope that we stumble upon Jesus' word. Right? Uh, when Lisa and I were first, uh, uh, when we weren't married, we were just friends, right? I thought she was the bee's knees. Right? I still do. She's awesome. Uh, my, wife's, my wife's awesome. Um, I thought she was just the coolest person in the world, right? And so every time um, I was around, you know, when we were friends, I just wanted to hang out with her like as much as I could. Like, we're, well, I just wanted to spend time with her. Um, but, uh, you know, her dad was not cool with that, right? So I was like, all right. <clears throat> so I can't, you know, the, the whole, like, dating thing, he was like, it was very, like, traditional courtship stuff, right? Uh, you had to, to go, like, in group settings, all that stuff. Like, it couldn't be isolated, all, that, all those things. Couldn't go on dates. And so I knew that if I wanted to hang out with Lise, right, I could not ask her on a date. I could not, uh, you know, maybe go to the movies, right? We had to like, go have dinner, and, like, a bunch of other friends had to be there, too. <clears throat> and so I was like, all right, if that's how I'm going to get to see Lise, then that's what I'm going to do, you know? So, um, you know, like, anywhere that I thought that she was going to be, like, without being creepy stalker, um, I was there, right? So, like, after church, if a bunch of friends were going to go eat at, at Rudy's, right, I was going to go eat at Rudy's with everybody, right? If a bunch of friends were going to go to a birthday party, uh, and, and I knew she was a mutual friend, like I was going to go. I was hoping to have this encounter, this, this ability to, to, to talk and to spend time and to hang out with Elise. Right? I could, I could hope, you know, as I'm just maybe like walking through the mall that I'll just randomly bump into her and like we get a chance to talk. But, but, but as far as being intentional, like I, I knew that I had a better chance of talking to Elise, of seeing her, uh, of spending time with her if I was at the places that she was going to be at. <clears throat> and the same is true for us in our prayer life. When our disappointments come, we can ignore God. We can, you know, we can just, I'm going to run, and if the Lord wants me, like, He can find me, I'll be over here, right? <clears throat> but the likelihood of us hearing from the Lord, the likelihood of us uh, of, of, of getting a chance to, to, to speak with the Lord and be intimate with the Lord are much more uh, or much greater, much higher if I am in pursuit of Him. We are much more likely to hear from Him when we pursue Him. And in this case, through prayer. Jesus wants us to pray, right? Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, 
right? Those disappointments, right? Don't let them cause anxiety. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, right? We, 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 we are, we are uh, invited to, we are encouraged, we are, we are uh, commanded to pray. It's, it's interesting, I was talking to someone from our gospel community about prayer, and, and we were talking about Billy Graham and how he prays, and, and, and Billy Graham was asked, you know, what his prayer life was like, and this is crazy, like, Billy Graham prayed all of the time, right? He was in this constant state of prayer, right? And so, and so he, he said that constantly, like as he was in these interviews, as he was talking to these, these world leaders, these, these world officials, as he, was, as he was in these situations, he was constantly in prayer. So though he was, he was talking to them, inside of his mind, he was saying, Lord, what do you want me to say? How do you want me to handle this situation? What's the next step you want me to take? Constantly in prayer. Always praying for discernment. Right? Always praying on how he should respond to questions. That'd be like me up here or, or us in our daily lives as we are going through our situations, our life, we're just in a constant state of prayer, of, commu of communication, of talking to the Lord. There's a lot of confusion about prayer. I, I, I got this from this, this, this next uh, explanation from this website. I like. It's called Got Questions. But it, 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 it kind of summarizes it for us. It says, far too often, prayer is viewed as a magic formula. Right? Some believe that if we do not say the right things in the right way or, or pray in the right position, right, God will not hear and answer our prayer. And this is completely unbiblical. God does not answer our prayers based on when we pray, where we are, what position our body is in, or in what order uh, we order our prayers. Right? We are told in 1 John chapter 5 to have confidence when we come to God in prayer, knowing He hears us and will grant whatever we ask as long as it is in His will. And so as we are uh, going to pray, well, what should we do? How should, how should we do it? What should I say? You know, should I, uh, should I you know, get on my knees? Should I stand up? Right? Should I um, go by my window? Should I go outside? And, 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 and all the Lord wants from us is just a sincere heart in our prayer. Right? And sometimes when we're praying, we don't know what to say. Randy quotes this scripture often it's romans 8 26 it says in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness we do not know what we ought to pray for all right sometimes you're so sad so depressed so taken back right so disappointed that you don't even know what to say you're just like you're just like a mental fog right man in those moments, the, the verse continues, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Have you ever been there in prayer? You just don't know what to say. You're like, Lord, I'm feeling very heavy right now. Right? Not physically. I've actually lost some weight. I'm excited about that. But I'm feeling uh, the weight of these situations and these circumstances on me, and I don't know what to do. I don't know how to pray for it, Lord, but I know I need your help. We're to pray, seek the Lord in prayer. Uh, our second point, since we are to pursue Jesus in our disappointment, we must seek Him in His Word. Right? Verse 4 in, this, in, this, in, our, in our passage today says, Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Right? Jesus is pointing John the Baptist to what? Not, not just his actions, but to what? To the Bible. Right? He's, he's pointing John the Baptist back to Scripture. <clears throat> right? All of these 
uh, things that he had just told John the Baptist, you can find in the book of Isaiah, right? The blind receive sight is Isaiah 29. The lame walk, Isaiah 35. Lepers are cured, Isaiah 53. The deaf hear, Isaiah 29, Isaiah 35. Right? The dead are raised, Isaiah 26. 26. And the good news is preached to the poor, Isaiah 61. Right? Jesus is pointing John the Baptist to Scripture. John's issue is he doesn't understand what's happening, right? He's like, I thought we were taking over with this military might, but I'm, I'm in jail right now, right? He has an inaccurate understanding of, of, of who, who the coming Messiah uh, is to be, right? We must, and, and so we have that same mistake also. We sometimes in our disappointments, we are disappointed not because God let us down, but because we have an inaccurate understanding of who God is and what God has called us to. We must turn to the Scriptures to find God. We must turn to the Scriptures to learn more about Him. We grow in our knowledge and our understanding of God and His character. And this understanding can help us in our trying and disappointing Times. And so a quick side note, right? I've talked about two things. One, uh, when we're going through our disappointments, there's two things. One is to seek the Lord in prayer, and the second is to seek the Lord through His Word. And so I want to take a quick side note uh, to help us in, when we're in prayer, when we're in the Word. It's something that I learned uh, uh, from, from seminary, right? <clears throat> uh, and so it, 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 it actually happens when we combine uh, Scripture and prayer. Um, and it's called praying the Bible, right? Uh, but, but, but as we read through Scripture, we are to pray as our heart is led. You know, this helps us in many ways, but one way is it can keep our prayers from being repetitive, right? We can also pray God's words and His will back to Him, we, or we can make them uh, uh, our prayers. And, and so how it works is you read a little bit, and then you pray a little bit. Um, you can do this with any portion of Scripture, uh, but most people uh, use Proverbs or Psalms um, to help them as their guide. Um, this morning, I'm going to walk us through it real quick, uh, but using Matthew chapter 6, and it's the Lord's Prayer. And so again, you read a little bit, and then you pray a little bit. It will look something like this. Our Father in heaven hallowed be your name, right? And you can just pause and say, Lord, your name is great above every name, Lord. Thank you. May our hope, may our faith, may everything that we um, build our lives on revolve around you, Lord. Verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, that I, I, I pray that I allow my current situation to display these characteristics of heaven, right? Let your kingdom come through me, Lord, to these students in this class, in this disappointing situation that I find myself in. Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, provide us for our needs today. Provide me with what I need to make much of you to these kiddos. Verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors, right? Lord, I confess my sin to you and I pray that I am also able to uh, forgive those students who are about to sin against me right now, right? Um, Lord, I, I, pray, I pray that I have that ability, Lord. And verse 13, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, keep me from temptation. Keep me from losing my temper. Keep me from treating these kids harshly, Lord. Amen. That's a simple tool that you can use to combine your prayer life with your reading life. And again, this is to help us seek the Lord in our disappointments. And then point number three, since we are to pursue Jesus in our disappointment, now this is, sounds redundant, uh, but since we are to pursue Him, then we must seek Him through our disappointments, right? Um, verse six says, Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me, right? Don't allow your disappointments to cause you to fall away 
from the Lord, but allow them to pull you closer. Right? Don't be, don't stumble. Right? Don't, 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 don't uh, let there uh, uh, be friction, or, or, or don't let your circumstances or your disappointments pull you away from the Lord. In those moments of despair and disappointment, draw in to the Lord. Right? The, 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 the situations and the circumstances we find ourselves in are not a surprise to the Lord. They may be surprising to us, but they're not a surprise to the Lord. Draw to the Lord. Right? Disappointing as they may be, those situations may be, draw into to the Lord. Here are a few verses uh, that can help us put these, this idea into perspective. Right? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will makes your path straight, right? Lean, uh, 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 lean on, not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, right? The Lord is talking. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And thoughts my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Right. <clears throat> so uh, God works all things out for 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 our good and His glory. Right now, what our good looks like may not be what we think is good, right? But it but it is good and it is for His glory. Though you might not understand what is happening in your disappointments, know that we are not God and our ways are not His ways. But find comfort in knowing that your disappointments are working out for God's glory and for our good.